Let the council rise. Representing the imaginary friends. Representing the vampires, mermaids, and otherwise mythical creatures. Representing the ghosts, ghouls, and spirits. Representing the shadows and sleep-related species. State your name, species, and current rank. Jasper, imaginary friend, and imaginary friend. Practicing. No, not really. My buddy moved on from me a couple years ago. Do you know why you've been called in? No. It has to do with Hudson. He's about to get hit with some big news. News he won't know how to process. He's going to have to make a big revelation in order to handle it well. And he's going to need someone to help him along the way. We want that someone to be you, Jasper. Really? Yes! Who knows this kid better than his own imaginary friend? Now that being said, this is not a job that we normally allow imaginary friends to do. Oh. Oh. That's it, right. It takes a special rank to be given this kind of duty, which is why we're promoting you. Should you accept it, we would be promoting you from regular imaginary friend to guide. It would be your job to take Hudson on a personal go-around and see that Hudson is able to handle everything that's being thrown at him. I accept! Given your abilities, you will be allowed to help him process in whatever ways you see fit. However, there are some rules that need to be followed. You will be receiving a file with everything you need to know about guide work. Inside the file are the rules. Make sure you follow them thoroughly. Also, keep in mind that we will be checking in during your assignment. If at any point we find that you are not following protocol or meeting the standards needed to be a guide, we have the right to pull you and send someone else in your place to make sure Hudson finishes his process. Don't worry! I'll make sure that that won't be necessary. I'll be one of the best guides you've ever seen. Hudson's journey will go so smoothly, he'll be like, wow, that go around went so smooth. And I'm so glad that I went on the journey with my best friend, Jasper. He's so awesome. All of that being said, are there any questions before you begin? Just one. When will I be finding out what he's going through? I mean, I'm going to know everything before I start helping, right? Of course. It'll all be in the paperwork you'll receive before the assignment begins. You will have some time to look everything over, but you must be ready to jump right in. Ready to my imaginary middle name. Well, with that being said, let us promote you from regular status imaginary friend to guide of Hudson Holiday. Meeting adjourned. Conjure up anything you want here. Void, I'd like a tiny trampoline to jump on, please. <laughs> Thank you, Void. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a god! <laughs> this is exciting! Scary. Both? I don't know. Well, I mean, I do know to a certain extent because I'm feeling it, but all my feelings are in a big giant feeling stew and they're all being mixed together and it's very confusing. But then it's also very delicious. I get to see Hudson again. That is definitely exciting. It's been so long since we got to play together. I wonder if he remembers me. I hope he does. I mean, he wouldn't forget about me, right? <laughs> of course not. No, we're best buds. Of course he'll remember me. Who could forget about such a cool cat? Rawr. 
I bet once I stroll up to his house, he'll jump for joy and then he'll play it cool because he's a cool cat too. And then he'll be like, Sup, Jasper? <laughs> it's been ages. And I totally didn't forget about you after all this time. And I'm so excited to hang out again. And I'll be like, Sup, bro? Yeah, best boots for life. And we'll fist bump and it'll be awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see him. But I guess I have to read about what it's like to be a guide. <laughs> Guide Work 101, the absolute basics to being a guide. Sounds simple enough. With great guide power comes great guide responsibility. With helping your human go through their emotional journey, you are granted the power to access their memories and have them relive said memories as you see fit. Ooh, time travel, that's fun. <laughs> you and your human may enter these memories fully or as observers. Although, if you choose the latter, you are not allowed to directly interact with or change that memory. You are a guide. Aw, thank you. You should not be forcing your human's go-round. Guides are prohibited from telling their human about the specifics of the assignment, and should rather make choices and decisions to guide them in the right direction. <laughs> I get it. You can check the progress of your go-round with your guide gauge. Oh, it will let you know if you're on the right path or if you begin to stray off track. Humans will not be able to see the guide gauge under any circumstances, so check it frequently as not to derail the go-round. Incomplete or insufficient progress of the go-round could result in a penalty ranging from demotion of guide position to sentencing to the Isle of the Ineffective. What? Oh, no, 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 that is very bad. I cannot go to the Isle of the Ineffective. I wouldn't be able to use my powers. Plus, people who go to the Isle of the Ineffective stay at the Isle of the Ineffective. i never be seen again. i never see Hudson again. i never see anybody again. Well, okay, I just have to make sure that that doesn't happen. You hear me, Guide Gage? That is not gonna happen. Me and Hudson are gonna hang out and I'm gonna guide him through the smoothest go-round ever. And then we'll play again and be best buds till the end of time, just like we planned. <sighs> Alright buddy, let's do this. You gonna get off your lazy butt or what? Hey, it's my day off. I think I deserve to sleep in a little bit. Besides, being lazy is so much easier. <laughs> well, thank you, Captain Obvious, but if everyone was lazy, then nothing would ever get done. Food wouldn't get prepared, kids wouldn't learn, nobody would travel, and most importantly, men and women all over town would be stuck with split ends and gray roots. You did not just seriously compare the basic needs of humanity to being a hairdresser. Well, for some, having nice hair is a basic human need. Plus, if people didn't want nice hair, I'd be out of a job. And then I'd get to be the lazy one around here. <laughs> okay. You are making a compelling argument. Here. My lazy butt has slightly moved. I'll satisfy it. Hmm. Not entirely, but I'll give you points for being a smart aleck. <laughs> you are so annoying. <laughs> oh, shut up. I love you. I know. I'm so great. How can you not? <laughs> Do you want me to take it back? I love you too. Oh, I wish I had off too. Well, where's the harm in calling out? I need to work. People rely on me. I mean, sure, but it's not like cutting hair is actually that deep. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Come on, Piper. No, really. I want to hear what you have to say. Why isn't it that deep? It's just... It's cutting hair. People can do that on their own. And they still come to me for it. People go to somebody who is trained because they can do it better. Yeah, but still, there are some jobs that are just so fundamentally different. You can't compare them to each other. It's like apples to oranges. I mean, you wouldn't compare a dog walker to a doctor or a 
delivery boy to a chemist or like... Or a hairdresser to a firefighter. Now, where are you getting that? You were thinking it. You were implying it. You literally just said that cutting hair is not that deep. <laughs> Am I wrong? Or were you not trying to say that your job is more important than mine? Pipe, you're being ridiculous. No, you're being a jerk. If my job isn't that deep, then maybe I should just quit. And then there wouldn't be a need to call out and can have all the lazy days that you want. You were the one who just said that you but wish you didn't have work But I'm not gonna quit, though. Even though you clearly think that what I do is such a menial job, I like what I do. I like knowing that I do a good job. My clients come to me because they know I do good work. Look, I don't know how long you've been harboring this god complex, but it's kind of ridiculous and I think you need to step off your high horse. Literally, who said anything about me having a god complex? You're being so crazy right now. Oh, and now I'm being crazy. A little bit, yeah. Well, maybe I'm crazy because you're driving me insane. You're acting all high and mighty right now and I'm not gonna put up with it. I'm gonna go to work, I'm gonna do a good job, and I'm gonna get tipped well, all while you sit here on your lazy ass and do nothing all day. Why are you acting like this? Just get away from me. I'm getting so sick looking at you right now. Like, I'm actually so mad at you that I think I could throw up. Oh God. Are you good, Pipes? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Uh, maybe you should call out of work. No, no, really, I'm fine. I'll just take some Advil, get a ginger ale at work. It's nothing I'm not used to, no big deal. Oh, shoot, I'm gonna be late for work if I don't head out like now. Come on, let me make you breakfast. I'll make you feel better. Oh, wow, we have a doctor in the building. <laughs> Why the hell are you in my bedroom? Buddy? Am I supposed to know you? You don't? <laughs> Come on, Hudson, stop playing. How do you know my name? Because we're best friends. I have no idea who you are. Oh, wait! Let me try to jog your memory. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jasper? Hudson! Oh, I'm so happy you remember me. I don't know what I would have done if you forgot me entirely. It would have been very bad, I can tell you that much. Am I hallucinating? Nope. It's me. Here I am. Very much here. Very much in front of you. Oh, God. I think I'm going crazy. Oh, buddy. Now, let's put this down. And try not to hit our best friends with it. The room's different. Yeah, well, it's not the same house. It's my apartment. What about Mom and Dad's room? <gasps> you mean you have this whole place all to yourself? It's like a, it's like a, a giant fort! <laughs> this is awesome! Uh-huh. You've gotten tall, and your face is all stubbly. Yeah, well, I'm not six anymore. I'm 26. You're 26? Dude, you're old. Do you, like, have a job and, and drive a car and, and watch the news and, and have coffee and oatmeal for breakfast like old people do? More or less. So, you're, like, a grown-up now. Pretty much. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> So, what's going on? Not much. Just exploring. Catching up with you. You're here, you're experiencing it. You know the deal. Yeah, but what are you doing here? Like, why are you here? Because you need me. How? Can't tell you. 
As in, you won't tell me, or you literally don't know why? The first one. Well, only sort of. It's not that I won't tell you, but it's also that I won't tell you because I'm not allowed to tell you. What? It's one of the rules. The rules for what? The rules of life. Well, not, well, not the board game life. Like, life life. Well, now that I think about it, I don't know the rules to the board game life. Like, are there actual rules, or do you just do what it says? Are there even pieces? Is it like Monopoly? But now that I think about it, I don't know the rules to Monopoly either. I just do what it says and go around I collecting the money you get when you pass go. What makes you think you're hallucinating? Uh, my imaginary friend from childhood just immediately uh, appeared out of nowhere, uh, suddenly became all cryptic, and uh, moved on to talk about board games. Well, it's not like I meant to start talking about board games. Just where my thought process moved to. Plenty of people get derailed in conversation. You know, I'm feeling a lot of judgment from you right now, and I'm very much not a person. Jasper, stay on track. What about the rules for life? Life. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, basically, you're going through something and need help. That's what I'm here for. I'm like your guide. Actually, I am your guide. Now, I can't tell you exactly what you're going through. You have to figure that out for yourself. But I can help you out and point you in the right direction. Well, what easier way to get me in the right direction than to just tell me what I'm going through? I just said that I can't tell you. That's not how it works. I'm here for this kind of stuff. And you're dealing it with this kind of stuff. If everyone just knew what was wrong with them and how to process what they're dealing with, everything would be dealt with here and not here. And there'd be no point of guides. That still barely makes any sense. It's just how it is, my dude. Okay, but here's another thing. You're my imaginary friend. Can I just tell you to tell me? I made you up. I should be able to make you tell me what's going on. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Not how it works either. One, the creation of imaginary friends is always up to debate. Some argue that yes, kids make us up and then we show up. Others argue that actually we've been around for ages and just go to kids when they need a friend. But that's neither here nor there. B, I'm not your imaginary friend anymore. I mean, yes, you're super awesome and we're gonna be best friends until the end of time and forever, but that's not my role for you anymore. When we stopped playing, I didn't mean I was gone forever. You may have forgotten me for a little bit, but that didn't mean I wouldn't be in your life anymore. The Council of Unseeable People saw that you needed help with something and thought that I was the perfect person for the job, so they promoted me to guide. <laughs> so now I'm here for new reasons. And thirdly, I've always had free will. Thank you very much. I still don't get what's going on. You're not supposed to. Like I said, if you knew what was wrong and why you needed help, then there'd be no actual need for me to be here. So then where do we go from here? On your go-round! What's a go-round? What we're going on, duh. Really? That vague? All I can say is that we're going on the start of an emotional journey. That sounds so exciting. It is! All right, now the question is, where do we begin? I know. Let's go to where it all began. Okay, sweetie, we really need to get to sleep. If we keep playing, we're gonna be up all night. But if we're up all night, then we can keep playing. That wouldn't be good, baby. You need sleep. And plus, Mommy and Daddy need sleep, too. Isn't that right, Daddy? All right, honey. Come on, Hud. Let's get you to bed. If not, you might get attacked by the Tickle Monster! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a visit from the Tickle Monster is going to make him any more inclined to go to sleep. It's already 7.30. All right. All right. Mommy's right. Really should get some sleep. <clears throat> Don't you have school in the morning? Yeah, and a show to tell tomorrow. Well, then you're going to need to be well rested now, aren't you? I guess. Come on, buddy. It won't be that bad. But I don't have anything to show. Of course you do. Hold on.
Well, while we're waiting for Daddy, why don't you get yourself tucked in? Okay. What is that again? <sighs> I'm not sure, sweetie. But if you don't like it, we can get up extra early tomorrow morning and pick out one of your favorite toys. But that means that you need to go to sleep as soon as Daddy gets back, okay? Here we are. This? This is my lucky hat. I wore it on all the big occasions in my life. I wore it when I joined the Phillies. I wore it when we won the World Series last year. And I wore it on the day you were born. This? This is a very special hat, HUD. I'm sure the kids in your class would love to see that, huh? Yeah, this is the coolest hat in the entire world. Are you sure you want to give that to him, Q? It holds a lot of memories for you. Of course. What kind of dad would I be if I didn't want to give a hat this magical to my own son? Besides, we leave for training pretty soon. Uh, think of it as something to remember me by. Thank you so much, Daddy. <laughs> Come on, time to get some sleep. Okay. Night, Mommy. Night, Daddy. Good night, Hudson. Um, you're gonna give him that hat? Like, yes. you're never gonna see him again? Or you're gonna see him? Yeah. What are you about? Of course. Okay, cool. Oh, I just wanted to. I just wanted to give him something. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't know. I felt like you were Ooh. gonna give him uh -huh. before you die mm -hmm. or something. Ooh. I like the hat. Well, That's well. Hi. Hi. I like this hat. That's my daddy's hat. Why are you wearing it? Hats are kind of my thing. Oh. Why? I like to turn into them. Because when I turn into hats, I can turn into people. Like right now. Oh, okay. What's your name? Actually, now that you mention it, I'm not 100% sure. Jasper. That's it. I like that name. So do I. Why are you here? I want to play. But it's bedtime. Can we not play when it's bedtime? Mommy says we can, but sometimes Daddy says we can, so I don't really know. Well, I say that we should play, because playing is fun. Okay. Hudson, what are you still doing up? I'm playing with my friend Jasper. Oh, and where is Jasper? He's in Daddy's head. Does Jasper's mommy know that he's up this late? How about you tell Jasper that you're going to have to play tomorrow? But I have school tomorrow! Well, then you two can play after school tomorrow. But for now, we have to get you back to bed, okay? Okay. Sleep well, Hud. I'm going to be the one to take you to school tomorrow. Why can't Daddy? He... He decided that he should go down for training tonight. So him and his teammates are going to meet up and do some team bonding, and then they're all going to go to training tomorrow. So it's just going to be Team Mommy and Huddy at home for a little while. Well... Oh, don't get upset. We're going to have so much fun, but the fun cannot start until we go to sleep. Oh, good night, sweetie. Good night, Molly. I don't think I have a mom of my own. Can your mom be my mom? Sure. I wish you could come to school with me tomorrow. Yeah. Wait, maybe I can. What? Your dad's lucky hat. Oh, you can turn into my dad's lucky hat and I can take you to school. That's a great idea. Hudson, I can hear you. If I have to come into your room one more time tonight, you're grounded. See? Isn't that fun? It's a lot more fun when best friends are playing than when one wants to hit the other with a mat. Sure. So, did you get anything out of that? Was I supposed to? Maybe. Well, how am I supposed to know if you don't tell me anything? That's the whole point of this thing. I know thing. it's the whole point. You told me that like four times already. I don't know what I'm supposed to do if you keep me in the dark the whole time. Can you like, give me a hint? I really can't. Sorry, buddy. 
Maybe this will help. Pick a color. Really? A fortune teller? You're not serious. Buddy, it tells your fortune. Why would I lie about something like that? Please, 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 please. Okay, please. fine. Uh, red. Actually, it's vermilion. If you're gonna play, you've gotta respect the colors. Does it really make a difference? Yes. Vermilion has a little more flair than boring old red. V E R M I O L I O N. Pick a number now. Three. One, two, three. Another number. Seven. <clears throat> What association do you have with the number seven? That's not a fortune. Did I say that it would be a fortune? Yes! You literally said it would be a fortune! I don't make the rules, bud. I just follow them. So I answer the question. What association do you have with the number seven? I don't know. That is not an answer. Go. Okay, uh, seven. Um, uh, seven. Letter S. Uh, mm, uh, seven, Lords of Leaping. Is that... Right one for that, whatever. Seven, uh, uh, slot machines, uh, money, luck, bad luck. Pause. Why does it make you think of bad luck? Well, when I was seven, the Phillies sucked. I mean, they didn't even come close to the World Series that year. I mean, I didn't really care. I was so young, but I imagine it must have been rough. Embarrassing. Dad was weird at home after that, in and out a lot. Like to the point where he's even missing holidays. And then there was that one day at the mall. Oh, wait. I got it. This is a perfect next stop on our go round. That was a close one. I thought we were gonna end up like Mufasa and the Lion King if we didn't find a safety spot. I don't see Mom. Huh, now that you mention it, I don't either. She couldn't be too far off though, right? She was near the red signs. I thought she was near the smelly perfumes. Weren't the perfumes near the red sign? The one with the tall ladies. I don't remember. I have an idea. Let's split up. Maybe we can find her faster that way. You got it, boss. Find her. Neither could I. What do we do? Oh no, 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 no. What? The Council of Unseeable People told me about this. I think Mama is lost. Oh no! No, 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 no! How are we gonna get home? Attention shoppers. The store will be closing in 15 minutes. The store will be closing in 15 minutes. Thank you. What was that? Buddy. I think that just said that if we don't find Mom soon, we're gonna get locked in here. Ah! Oh no, no, no. How are we gonna find Mom now? I got it. I may not be good at finding Mom, but I am good at finding other people. What if I found someone and, and brought them here and they could help us find Mom? Okay. Okay. You stay here and I'll go looking. Are they gonna be wearing a hat? Duh. I'll be right back. Okay. Hey there, buddy. Everything okay? I think my mom is lost and I can't find her. Your mom's lost? That's no good at all. Luckily, I'm very good at finding moms. Oh, thank goodness. Where'd you see her last, little man? There was, uh, smelly perfumes and a red sign with tall ladies on it. Hmm. Well, I'm afraid there are no red signs with tall ladies on them around here. That must be on the other end of the store. How'd you get all the way over here? Well, we were around a bunch of the perfumes and the red sign with tall ladies on it, but they were but they were really smelly. And Jasper wanted to look at hats, so I went looking with him, but all of a sudden, a bunch of people showed up, and I didn't want to get stampeded. So I hid in the clothes, I went through the clothes, and all of a sudden, all the people were gone, and I couldn't find the perfumes, or the red sign, or Mom. I see. So why did you go to the hats? 
Because Jasper likes hats. Oh, does he? But where's Jasper now? Your hat. Oh. Give me. Okay, he's gone. Well then. Attention shoppers, the store will be closing in 15 minutes. The store will be closing in 15 minutes. Thank you. Right. Well, we should really be finding your mom. The store's about to close up. What's your name, little buddy? Hudson Holiday. Page the mother of Hudson Holiday to the sports section. Could the mother of Hudson Holiday please come to the sports section? Thank you. All right. Your mom should be here in a few minutes. Is your dad lost too? No, he's at work. Sometimes he's here, but sometimes he's somewhere else. Oh, what does he do? He's a baseball player. Plays for the Phillies. Wait a minute. Is your dad Quentin Holiday? Wow, I didn't realize we were dealing with a little superstar today. <sighs> Hudson, are you okay, baby? Oh my God, I am never losing sight of you ever again. I don't know how we got lost. I'm so sorry, Hudson. You must have been so scared. He's all right, ma'am. He's somehow new to find me. He's a very responsible kid. Yeah, Jasper found him and he found you. Well, thank goodness. Come on, let's just go home. Thank you so much, sir. I really cannot possibly thank you enough. That's no problem, ma'am. Marley? Hmm? You don't recognize me? Come on, or University Acapella? Court of the Rings! Ah, oh, Jason! I'm so sorry. My mind is not what it used to be, especially with this one running around. My head is always in 15 different places at once. Yeah, I can see that. So, you snagged a filly, huh? <laughs> uh, you could say that, but we don't really need to talk about that right now. We should catch up, though. Maybe coffee or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Great! <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> well, uh, here. Here's my number. And you can call me sometime. It was really great seeing you, Jason. You too, Marls. Attention shoppers. The store is now closed. Please make your final selections and make your way to the front of the checkout. Thank you. Aw, I miss Jason. He was fun. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that day was scary. It's not like it was the worst thing in the world. Uh, I wouldn't say things got better, though. No? Not really. Things pretty much went back to how they were. Well, back to how they had been before that. And Dad was still in and out all the time. Stayed that way for a few years before I knew it. Mom was telling me that she and Dad were officially getting a divorce. Oh. Yeah. I mean, Dad was barely around anyways. He got his own place and that's where he'd stay during the off-season. He didn't bother to live at home. And I only saw him every other weekend, if not just birthdays and major holidays. But yeah, that was it. By the time I was like 10 or 11, I was a child of divorce. Everything okay, buddy? Yeah, yeah. I just... That never really hit me up until now. See? That would not have happened if I had just told you. So that's it? Came back just to remind me that my family's way more broken than I remember it? No. <laughs> just to stop on the go-round, I'm afraid. Well, what more is there to say? Once the divorce was finalized, Mom got sole custody of me. I only saw Dad on occasion, and by the time I was 15 or 16, I only saw him on TV. We'd stop playing by then. That must have sucked. And no kidding. The worst part is I'll never really know why. Your Mom would always tell me that they weren't happy, but Dad never said a thing. And when I would ask him, he would just brush it off and change the topic to anything else. It was like he was hiding something. What do you think he was hiding? Who's to say? I've had plenty of time to think about it. I've come up with a lot of options. I left because I wasn't happy with your mother. I left because work was getting out of hand. Traveling takes a lot out of you. Losing so hard after our big win was rough. I was too embarrassed to show my face. There was another woman, Cindy. There were two other women. 
There were so many women, I couldn't even keep track. Being a huge baseball star, everybody wants you. I couldn't stay tied down. I have another family in Tampa. Florida's where we train. It's convenient. I didn't want a family to begin with. My lucky streak ended the minute I gave you my hat. My reputation was ruined. Everything I had, I lost. And it was all your fault. I left because of you. Buddy, Hud, I'm sorry. Oh, but hey, I mean, that's just some of the stuff I've been able to come up with, so... For all I know, maybe it's something completely different. And it's not like he's around anymore, so... Yay. Well, if it's any consolation, there's a chance that none of that's the case. There's a chance that it has nothing to do with you at all. Yeah. But come on, let's think about happier things. Like what, Jasper? Our entire conversation has been negative. Not all of it. We got to reminisce about being friends, and, and you learned the difference between red and vermilion. Jasper. Okay, sorry. Back to happy. <sighs> Come on. Let's play a little. I don't know if I'm in the mood. Well, then you can't blame me for making you feel all negative, now can you? I'm offering a way to have fun and be a little more positive, and you're refusing it. That is not my fault. Okay, fine. You can play for a little bit. <laughs> what's going on, buddy? Tell me what's in your head. Nothing. It's nothing. Dude, you know that's the whole point of everything. We can't get anywhere if you don't share your feelings. I don't know. I'm just... I'm thinking about my parents. Yeah? What about? It's like my mom dating again. What? what? When did that happen? I don't know. I was like 12, 13. Wow. How'd that happen? Wait! This is a perfect moment to analyze on our go-round. Hud, uh, tonight's an important night. Yeah, like you said a hundred times. I have some big news. Well, you know how Abby's been over a lot more to babysit? Yeah, it's so annoying. Like, come on. I'm 13. I'm a teenager now. I know how to dial 911. I know not to take in from strangers. I know to order real pizza instead of getting Domino's. I'm practically an adult. I don't think I need Abby anymore. Okay. First of all, so much of what you just said concerns me, and frankly makes me think that maybe you do still need Abby, but that is a discussion for a different day. So then what's the discussion for today? Well, Abby's been babysitting you more because I've been going out more, and um... Yeah? And sometimes it is with the girls, but... but sometimes it's not. Okay. Hud, I've been seeing someone. Well, a guy. A really, really nice, sweet guy. You have? His name is Jason, and we knew each other in college, then drifted apart, and then we found our way back together. Cool. Are you not happy for me? I mean, I guess. I don't know. Hud, you're my baby, and you know that your opinion matters above all else, which is why... He's coming over for dinner tonight. He's what? To meet you. He's been wanting to meet you for a long time now, and I just wanted to wait until the time felt more right. But what about Dad? Oh, buddy. You know that your father and I have been separated for a while now. Yeah, and? And it means that it is time for us to start seeing other people. I'm sure your father has been. What? Well, nothing is certain. I mean, I don't really know his life anymore, but... Hudson, look. I'm really sorry. And I know that this is a lot for you to take in all at once, but... You've got to understand that when you're an adult, things get complicated, and relationships are not so black and white. But that that is not the point of tonight. The point of tonight is just for you to meet Jason and see what you think of him. 
That must be him right now. I will go get it and you stay right here, okay? <laughs> Hudson, this is Jason, and Jason, this is Hudson. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Jason, Jason, the mall guy? Hey there, little man. Put her there. No, uh, I brought donuts. Maybe we could get to, you know, snacking on them. Jason, <laughs> that's going to ruin his appetite. We're about to have dinner. Come on, Marls. Let him live a little. Boston cream. Nice. That is my personal fave as well. He's usually a lot more talkative than this. No, it's all right, I got it. He's meeting someone new. It can be a lot to take in. So, Hudson, tell me about yourself. What kind of things do you like to do? I like to play baseball. My dad taught me. He's a professional baseball player. Plays for the Phillies. They've won the World Series a few times. What have you done with your life? Hudson! What? I'm just trying to have a conversation. Holding a conversation and being flat out rude are not the same thing. Now apologize. Sorry. Or whatever. No, no. I get it. You want your mom to be in safe hands. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Ew. Anyway. <laughs> let's eat. Hud, is there anything else that you'd like to know about Jason? Yeah. Why are you trying to ruin my family? I'm sorry. Hudson Ronan Holiday. You asked me if I wanted to know anything about him. I just want to know why he's trying to stop you and Dad from getting back together. Huddy, you know that it's more complicated than that. How? Things just didn't work out between us. Well, make it work again. I'd rather things work out between you and Dad than you and him. You know, maybe I should go. We'll try this again later, Marls, when he's really ready. No, that's it. Hudson, your attitude will not be tolerated at this table. So you either apologize to me and Jason, or go to your room. <laughs> oh, hold up. Why were you going to tell me that Mom dated and got married to Jason? What? It's very important information. Is it actually relevant information, or are you just being annoying? You know what? Don't answer that. It's not like you tell me anyways. Hey, you know I'm under very strict guidelines right now. And whether or not it's important to the go-round, it's important information to me. Whatever. Also, I'm getting those judgy vibes from you again, and they're as unappreciated now as they were earlier. Maybe if you weren't making me so angry, I wouldn't be so. What's making you angry? You are. These memories are. Everything is. It's not fun having to relive some of my least favorite memories of all time over here. And I'm getting really sick of it. You know what? I think I just need uh, some air. Can you, can you give me that? Can you just leave me alone for like five minutes? Wait, I have an idea. Stay right here. Put this on. I definitely do not want to put that on. Do it. It'll help. How? You were doing so well with not asking questions I'm not allowed to answer. Come on. Fine.
Hey, HUD. Hi. It's been a while. Yeah. You've grown. Yeah, that's what happens when you walk out on a kid before he hits puberty. I missed out on a lot, didn't I? Should have figured. Dumb question. My bad. Oh no, it's fine. Simple conversations with your son can be hard. I get it. You know that's not fair for either of us. I tried making efforts, but you didn't seem like you were in the right place. So I gave you your space. You know, a relationship is a two-way street, even father-son. And by the time you were old enough, you cut me out the same way you thought I cut you out. Listen, if he's only here to put the blame on me, I don't need to hear it. He's here for you. You're the one wearing the hat. You control the conversation. Sorry about that then. It's all right, son. How's your mom doing? Fine. She found another guy, Jason. They're happy together. That's good. So why'd you do it? Huh? Why did you walk out on me? Hunt. Because that's what you did, right? You walked out on me. It's not that easy. No, I think it is. Because if what you did wasn't walking out on me, then at the very least you would have been around more. But no. The minute you didn't need to care anymore, you didn't. What makes you think that at all? I tried my best. No, you didn't. Trying your best would have been trying to work things out with mom. Trying your best would have been fighting to share custody of me. Trying your best would have been doing more for me than sending me a card with money on my birthdays. You didn't try your best. You tried the bare minimum. So yeah, I did cut you out. You clearly stopped caring. So did I. I understand that you're mad. But yelling and screaming and not being willing to hear my side is not going to help either of us. Fine. Tell me your side. I'll try to hear it. Well, we were on a high from winning the World Series that year. The fall from Grace hit hard. It was a lot to live up to. I was struggling. A lot. I just wasn't happy anymore. With anything. You know what? I changed my mind. What was the point of that, huh? I thought that if you got to talk to Imaginary Dad, that you'd get some peace of mind. Yeah? Well, you were wrong, Jasper. He didn't say anything that surprised me. Because you weren't listening. Oh, I listened plenty. No, you heard him. You weren't listening to him or to the rules. You're being too controlling. Who knows if that's what he really meant to say. Me, Jasper? I've known this whole time. He said he wasn't happy with anything. Anything. You know what's included in anything? Me. You're thinking too much with your head. You can't think with your head. You have to feel with your heart. I don't care anymore. Listen, I'm done with this whole go-round crap. Just tell me what will get you to leave, because you leaving will help me with my heart. Just go!
Jasper. We were notified that your guard gauge has hit a code red. Give us a status report. It's uh, still in, in process, of course. And how is Hudson reacting to the process? Well, clearly not well. He hit a code red for crying out loud. Well, a human person experiencing time travel and emotional breakthroughs for the first time, it can be a lot to take in at first. But how is he? Emotionally. Let me repeat myself. Clearly not well, he hit a code red for crying out loud. Hey, like I said, emotional breakthroughs are a lot. Jasper, tell us where you two left off. Well, I, I thought it would help if he was able to talk to his dad and... No, you didn't. Trying your best with trying to work things out with mom. Trying your best would have invited you to share custody of me. Trying your best would have been doing more for me than sending me a card with money on my birthdays. You didn't try your best. You tried the bare minimum. I knew we shouldn't have trusted his imaginary friend for the job. There's too much bias. Now, hey, we couldn't have predicted he was going to react so negatively. We can't be so hard on Jasper. I disagree. I think we should be harder. The two already knew each other. Jasper should have known how to tread the situation more carefully. If you ask me, this is an immediate sentencing to the idol of the ineffective. They haven't spoken to each other in over ten years. Humans change, especially in the years Hudson was alone. I have to argue. The role of guides are incredibly cautious. Jasper should have known how to adapt. Hudson may have changed as he grew up, but it's not like he's an entirely new person. Well, the fact of the matter now is that we have to decide where to go from here. Is Jasper still fit to be Hudson's guide? Absolutely not. I think we should whip out a night hound or two. They know how to whip people into shape. Oh, uh, yeah, if you want to traumatize him. He's 26. He'll be fine. Sleep paralysis affects humans of all ages. It would be running a huge risk. Well then, let's put it to a vote. <clears throat> All those in favor of sending Jasper to the Isle of the Ineffective and replacing him as Hudson's guide with some night hags, raise your hand. <sighs> you guys suck. I think we should give Jasper a second shot. It is his first time being someone's guide. How is he supposed to know any better? There are still different tactics he hasn't tried out yet. And how is he supposed to try them out if he gets demoted? Well, he can always just go back to training. But we all know that you don't really learn until you get some human world application. I stand by that. Nobody knows or will know Hudson as well as Jasper. Therefore, nobody can help Hudson as much as him. So we're just gonna forgive how badly he's doing just to hope that things turn out okay? This kid just unpacked, blocked out emotional trauma, pushes his guide away, and we're just gonna be like, Oh yeah, the guide did nothing wrong. He can keep going. And this is coming from the one who suggested we deal with Hudson's go-round through night terrors. It's effective. Oh, be quiet! Night hags are out of the question. Can we please stick to the subject at hand? Yes, getting back to business. I think Jasper is a fit guide. He just hit a bump in the road. But aren't road bumps expected when our humans are going on a move? We'll put it to a vote. All those opposed to giving Jasper a second opportunity to be Hudson's guide, raise your hand. And those in favor. Well, then it's settled. Jasper, we will reset your guide gauge and you will have one more chance to help Hudson through his go-round. However, one more blow up like that and you will be up for demotion. And I'm afraid to say we are not as forgiving when it comes to the Isle of the Ineffective the second time around. Thank you so much, Council. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I promise you won't be disappointed. Hudson and I are best friends, and once he gets over this mood swing, we'll get back right to it.
If I may say one more thing, Jasper, you know not even you have to go on the go-round alone. There is no harm in asking for help from others. I would be even so bold as to say that collaboration is encouraged. That being said, you are Hudson's guide, Jasper. You're the one in control. Guide him how you will. Just make sure he gets to the emotional destination all right. You got it. I swear you guys won't regret this decision. Thank you so much. I still say we bust out the night hags if things go awry. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. But let me tell you, though, I mean, prom season is officially in full swing. I had a girl come in today, and she wanted me to make her look like she came straight out of Game of Thrones. I mean, literally, she brought in reference pictures and everything. Luckily, I know how to work some magic with a curling wand, and she looked amazing. And the prom moms love to show that they appreciate the look, too. Well, where would 17-year-olds be without your talent? <laughs> Not Westeros, I'll tell you that much. Hey, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For this morning. As much as I don't want to admit it, I, I was being a little crazy. and I don't know what came over me. I just, it hurt my feelings to hear that you didn't think my job wasn't a big deal. I don't know, I guess it just made me feel inferior to you. Did I really make you feel like that? I'm sorry. I just figured it wouldn't be that big a deal if you wanted to take the day off and then it spiraled into whatever it turned into, and yeah. So maybe we could say we were both being a little crazy? Sure. I love you. I love you too. So, I'm not sick. Really? Yes. I must have just worked myself up this morning. By the time I got to work, I was fine. How was your day off? Fine. Are you sure? Because you're looking a little moody, and Moody Hudson is never fun. I just... just really missed you, that's all. Ooh, yikes. That's actually really awkward because I was just about to admit that I actually hate you. <laughs> Shut up. So really, what's up? Are things in Hudson land okay? I'm fine. There's nothing you want to talk about? I, I don't know how to explain it, but... Things happened earlier today, put me in this weird funk. You know how you can go years without thinking about something and then the tiniest thing happens and then sends all these memories flooding back? Oh yeah, all the time. You know, I have this one smell, I don't know the name of the specific scent, but whenever I smell anything like banana and strawberry -y, I get taken back to this one trip that my family took to Cancun when I was like four. I barely remember anything from that trip except for this smoothie that they had at the poolside bar. What I do remember is that it was like my favorite drink. It just fills me with happiness. You're adorable. So that happened to you today? Pretty much. Well, if it's putting you in that much of a funk, we don't have to talk about it. We could just chill. I was thinking about making fried rice for dinner. I'm good, really. I'm, I'm good. I just, I just need some time to process, that's all. I wouldn't say no to fried rice. <laughs> you got it, babe. Oh, I think we're out of soy sauce. Now I'm gonna go head out to the store and get some before we go hungry and starve to death. You know what, I got it. Yeah? You sure? Yeah, you've already had a long day. Plus I've been inside way too long. Fresh air would be nice. All right, be back soon. Don't die. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> ah! Who are you and what are you doing in my house? Wait, you can 
see me? Uh, yeah, very clearly. Do you know Hudson? Have you seen him? Well, that depends. Who's asking? Me. I'm asking. Well, yeah, obviously, but that's not what I meant. Tell me, who are you and how do you know Hudson? How do you know Hudson? Don't you dare try to pull anything on me. I know how to use this. I'm his imaginary friend. Well, at least I was. Now, I'm his guide. His guide? His guide for what? I have to take him on a go-round! You're literally not making any sense right now. Get out of my house! Uh, wait! Uh, l let me prove to you that I'm good. I'll do anything. Tell me how you know Hudson. And give me a real reason this time. I did, though. Oh, yeah, like I'm gonna believe that Hudson still has an imaginary friend. Yes! And no. We used to play when we were little, but then he started growing up and we stopped playing. But imaginary friends don't go away forever. Right now, he's going through distress, and the Council of Unseeable People thought that I was the best person to help him through the motions of said distress and process what he's feeling. So I'm back. It's a lot to take in. Hudson freaked out the first time I showed up, but I swear I'm here for good. Scout's honor. I don't know why, but something in my gut is telling me to trust you. So I will. But if you say or do anything that gives me any reason to lose that trust, I will use this on you in a second. Thank you. I like to think that gut feelings are when our head and our heart are feeling the same thing. And I understand. And would be honored to be hit by your pan. But also, please don't hit me with your pan. What do you do for work? That's the first thing of all things that you ask? I want to know. I'm a hairdresser. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> At least someone thinks so. Do you not like it? No, I... It's not a big deal. I mean, Hudson and I got in this big thing about it this morning, but I was being crazy and we made up. It's fine. Okay. So, are you ever going to tell me what your name is? Jasper. Hmm, okay. I'm Piper. It's lovely to meet you. Likewise. I think. Okay, so let me get this straight. Hudson made you up as a kid and now you're back to help him because... Because he's going through something and he has to go on his go-round. And I'm here, as his guide, to help guide him through it. And what exactly is a go-around? What does he have to go through? Can't really say. That's against the rules. Something Hudson has to figure out on his own. All right. One more question. Why are you wearing my hat? Oh, hats are kind of my thing. Right. I must say, you're taking this all surprisingly well. It's very admirable. Thanks. So, how do you know Hudson? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm his girlfriend. Oh. <gasps> oh! What? What? Oh my god, 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 you're, you're, you're... What? Aren't you? How do you know? I know a lot of things. But not my face, not my job, not how I know Hudson, or literally anything else about me. The paperwork didn't have as much information as it thought it would. So, does anyone know? Uh, well, clearly you do, and whoever gave you that information... The Council of Unseeable People. The what of what now? Don't worry about it. <sighs> Can I ask you something? Sure. Okay, so I visited Hudson earlier today, and it did not go well. The Council of Unseeable People said I could keep going, but that I shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. Naturally, I'm Hudson's best friend forever and all time, so obviously I'm going to know him best, but you might be a close second. Thanks. So, would you mind helping me get Hudson through his go-round? What's going to happen? A lot of things. Primarily confronting ignored emotions, probably fighting, but all done in the hopes that he becomes a better person in the end. Do I really have a choice in the matter? Of course. I would never force you to do anything against your will. Oh, respect. 
Well, in that case, I'd be honored to help. Not the eye will be ineffective. Not the eye. Feel with your heart. Feel with your heart. I still don't know the rules to life. I wonder if it's gonna be a boy or a girl. Hey babe, sorry I took so long. I swear they rearrange the store every couple of weeks so that you make you buy something new. They got me. Buddy. What do you want, Jasper? I told you to leave me alone. I know you did, but I can't. You're not done with your go-round yet. Besides, I missed you. This is the first time we've gotten to play together in a while. Listen, Jasper, I'm 26 now. I grew up, and when you grow up, you have to move on from things. That's not always true. No matter how old you get, there are some things that you can't move on from. Well, I've basically been raised to move on from things my whole life, so I don't know what you want. What I want is to help you on your go-round. If I have to hear you say my go-round one but more time. But I can't do that if you keep shutting me down and pushing me away. You know, he has a point. You can see him? Yeah, we already went through this whole ordeal. We'll talk about it later. Right now, you have to focus on Jasper. Pushing people away isn't going to solve all your problems, dude. Jasper, listen. I've tried being patient with you, but I just feel like we keep going in circles. Trust me, I get it. You've made it very clear. But here's the thing, and, and I know I've said it a bunch already, but I can only explicitly say so much. I'm already on thin ice, so I really can't be going off and breaking even more rules. Rules have been broken? Um, uh, not necessarily. The journey took a road bump that was much bigger than expected. People being mean and pushing their guides away is typically not part of the procedure. Dude. Hey, you relive your parents' divorce and see if you're okay on the other side. Don't you dare give either of us sass right now. You're clearly going through something, and the only way you're going to get out of this funk is if you listen. Look, I've already snapped on you today, and I'm not afraid to do it again. But just ask Jasper, I almost attacked him with a frying pan. It's true. She almost did. Sorry. It's okay, buddy. Can't stay mad at you. So then what am I supposed to do now? Where do we go from here? Forward. Well, we sort of have to do that by going backwards. But we've been doing that. You're used to it by now. Anyways, reflection. That's the word of the day. Reflection. Yeah. Do you know what it means? Obviously. Well, good. That's the whole point of this thing. Have you been reflecting on yourself? I mean, yeah, a little. Good. You're getting there. Can I ask something? Of course. So why exactly did you come here? Like, I know you can't flat out say what's going on with him, but why today of all days? Well, I can't disclose too much, but long story short, Hudson's gonna receive some big news today. And we'll need to process a lot of things before dealing with it. Big news. I think I've handled everything you've thrown at me pretty okay, if you ask me. I'm not the big news. My imaginary friend from 20 years ago shows up and that's not the big news. There's more. What? Okay. Sit down. I, I, I want you to be sitting for this. <sighs> well, before I start, I, I just want to remind you how much I love you. I, I love you so much that I can't even put it into words. This is either going to be really good news or really bad news. No, I, I just felt the need to preface because I love you and I really don't want you to hate me or to be mad at me. Listen, I don't want to do all the emotional stuff and the unnecessary crying. If this is a breakup, just say it now. What? No! Because that's what this is, right? You're not happy anymore? You, what, you cheated on me? Is that it? Hud, no, I is swear! Is that what all this stuff was for, dude? You want me to relive all this stuff with my parents divorcing because we're supposed to break up? Is that the moral of the story? Everyone and everything falls apart? No, you're thinking too much with your head again. Just spit it out already! Hudson! Just, what is it? Are you... So, this morning when we had that fight... I'm more hormonal than I thought, I guess. 
you're really... Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know. How, how, how long were you going to keep it a secret? I was just waiting for the right time, but the circumstances kind of threw everything out of control. Oh my god. You're not upset, are you? What? No, of course not. It's okay if you are. I literally just dropped a bomb on you. Trust me. I've dealt with a lot of bombs today. It's fine. Yeah. So? So this actually? Hudson, do you not want this baby? What? Of course I do. What would make you think otherwise? Whose word are you going to take? His or mine? Oh my god. So you are upset. No, that's well, not it. Well then why it. are you freaking out like this? It's kind of a lot of news to get, Piper. Maybe it's just the hormones making me crazy, but you look pretty upset right now. And it's making me pretty upset. Because if you're not happy, then I have to deal with that. And I have to deal with that in more ways than you do. I'm fine. I'm really, really fine. It's just... What? I'm scared. Is this part of it? Part of the go-around? A big part, buddy. Huge. But I can't be a dad. Why not? Are you not ready? I mean, I've got a steady job, you've got a steady job. We'd be fine, but I don't think I could handle it emotionally. Why not? I barely had my own dad for half my life. How am I supposed to know how to be one? There's more to it than you think. Are you serious right now? What? No, I'm not going to let you pull this. You seriously think you can't be a parent because your dad wasn't around? Piper, father figures are pretty important. Look how not having one's affected me. Okay, so are you just going to completely ignore your stepfather? Or your mom? Do I have to spell it out for you? You shouldn't. On second thought, maybe you should. Who cares about your dad? He wasn't around to raise you, but you're here. You're a person, an adult, a soon-to-be parent. You turned out just fine. Huh. Yeah. So, how we doing? Beyond shock? Like, I need some answers. You know, I can't give you much. I know. I don't think there are answers you could give me anyway. Well, then what do you want to do? I think I need to talk to Mom. Yeah? Yeah. Can I just say that this has been a huge step for your go-round? Just remember to try not to think too much with your head this time, okay? <sighs> go away, Mother! Trisha, I will not have you wasting one more tear on Steven Sawalski. Do you hear me? Yes, Mother. <sighs> so, honey, how is everything? Good. Good. Where's Jason? Oh, he's just out with some friends from work. You know him and the guys. They have to have their man time talking about God knows what. But he should be home soon. Do you want to stay for dinner? We can cook something up for you. Maybe. Uh, but that's not why I'm here. Well, what's up? <laughs> I, I just have something I need to ask you. What? Why did you and Dad really split up? I know that's a really big question to just throw at you right here and right now, but, but I need to know. Is everything okay? I've just been going through a lot of self-reflection lately. I, I need it for peace of mind. You know you're not going to be satisfied, no matter what I say. Was it because of me? What? Was no. having a kid too much? Of course Was the not. pressure too much? Hudson, there's no need to get yourself all hyped up. Honestly, your father and I just weren't happy anymore. Our love burned bright, but it burned out quick. I mean, by our first year of dating, we were engaged, we were married by our second, and you were already crawling around by our third. It's, it's not necessarily that we rushed into things, it's just that you don't realize how hard life hits when you're moving that fast, and we hit some bumps. <laughs> We had a lot of bumps. Our marriage didn't work for a lot of reasons. 
but you were never one of them. Why did he stop visiting? I think you know that after a while it just got pretty hard to, Hud. Do you think he regretted having me? Not at all. You were one of the best things to ever happen to him. Even better than the World Series win. Piper's... Piper's pregnant. What? She is? I know. It's a whole other bomb to just drop on you. That's right amazing news, sweetie. Why isn't she here to celebrate with us? Because I need advice. I just... I'm scared. I don't know how to be a dad. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. It's freaking me out. Who is saying that you need to know what to do? It's not necessarily something you can know how to do before it actually happens. Do you think that your father and I knew exactly what to expect when you showed up? Do you think that I knew how to raise a young boy on my own after the divorce? <laughs> no. <laughs> there were so many nights where I was on the verge of tears just trying to figure out how I was going to raise you on my own. And then you would come downstairs and, I don't know, ask for a cup of water? Or I would hear you upstairs in your room playing and all that stress, it would just disappear for a little while. Because you were my world and you always had this magical way of making me feel better. And that's what kids do to you. <laughs> they change you in a way that you can never be 100% prepared for. But uh, for the next nine months, when the baby is growing, at least you can start planning. But that's what's so scary. You know, kids can change everything. I mean, what if everything takes a downward spiral? What if Piper and I start fighting all the time? What if I can't handle the pressure of being a parent? If I walk out on them and put them through the exact same situation, I, I don't want to be like dad. I'm terrified. No matter what, I'm going to end up like him. And I, I don't want my kid to view me the same way. Hudson, look at me right now. Have you ever, or do you currently, plan on becoming a professional baseball player? Well, no, but... <laughs> well, then fundamentally, you will not be exactly like your father. Well, I don't know if having a different job makes that much of a difference. Do you really think that that is the only way you two are different? Seriously, do you? Hudson, you had to grow up so much faster than the rest of your kids your age. And whether it was helping me with the dishes or taking out the trash or what have you, you really were the little man of the house. And that just kept going as you got older. You would help your friends settle fights at school. You were there for us when Jason was in between jobs. You supported Piper all through cosmetology school because that's what you're good at. You help people. And look at you now. You're a firefighter. You help people every day. You save people. You saved me plenty of times. Don't you dare think you're gonna end up like your father because I know deep in my heart that your baby is going to be so loved because you are full of love. Thanks, Mom. For what, sweetie? I don't know, for everything. Recent events have just led me to realize all you've done for me, and I've always taken advantage of it. I'm sorry. Aw, that means. I love you. I love you too. Now come on, why don't you stay for dinner? We can start cooking right now. I need to talk to Dad first. Tell him the news. I think he'd like that. Tell him I say hi. Hey, Dad. Let me just tell you, today has been wild. I don't even know where to begin to tell you how crazy it's all been. I, I swear you'd think it was an adventure I made up when I was a kid, but... Anyways, uh, 
I, I'm not here to just ramble. I, I mean, I'm going to ramble, but I know that you'll listen. It's not like you have much choice. I've got the control right now. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk at you for a little bit. What you did really hurt me. I didn't know how to process any of it as a kid. I barely know how to process it now. But I think what hurt more than the divorce itself was how little it felt like you did to try to fix anything. Why did you stop visiting? Why did you avoid ever talking about it? Did you even really care? I, I know this is all in my head, so you'll... Just tell me whatever I want to hear, but still. Growing up, you pretty much shaped all my expectations of what a man was and what a man should be, so... When you left, everything just flipped. I don't know. But by the time I was hitting puberty and learning all about becoming a man, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have someone to look up to and learn from. In short, Mom found Jason. But I, sometimes the damage can be done too soon, you know? But really, after this recent turn of events, I began to realize that that wasn't the case. I learned about manhood from a lot of different sources. You, or at least what I thought of you. Jason, friends from school, teachers, coaches, friends, parents, and even Mom and Piper. I'm 26 years old and I'm only just now realizing that I'm a man even though I didn't have one particular male figure to look up to. Huh. Th this isn't just me trying to rub it in your face that I turned out okay despite seemingly messing me up as a kid. I just... I don't know. I just needed to let my feelings out. Reflect. And I knew I could do so here. You're such a great listener right now after all. I'm going to be honest, my view of you isn't magically healed. There's still a lot I have to process, but life has just been put into perspective for me, I guess. And I finally have a little peace of mind. So, that's where I'm at right now. Thanks for listening. I miss you. Just say, it has been one hell of a go round. And I'm proud of you, buddy. Me too. Really proud. Yeah. So, I guess this means you're done now? Technically, yeah, this is it. I'll have some post op discussions with the council, but this is basically it. But hey, I'm still your imaginary friend. Best friends. Until the end of time and forever. Jasper, how are you doing? Fine, very fine. <laughs> no, actually, that's a lie. I'm great. I'm really, really great. That's good to hear. Um, if you don't mind me asking, where's the rest of the council? I have a special assignment for you, but one that doesn't need to involve the rest of the council. It's specific for imaginary friends. Plus, I needed a break from Shadow, and I really don't think I could have handled him trying to take over. Oh. How's your vacation going? It's fun! I didn't know guides got so much downtime. Just makes me excited to go on my next guide mission, though. Well, that's the reason why we're here. Oh, but, but the one with Hudson turned out so well. He was able to go on his go-around, and he came back a better person. Th that was the plan! No, I know. However, in total candor, there is a significant reason for me to demote you back to imaginary friend. And I'm thinking of doing so. Okay, I understand. I'll start preparing for the Isle of the Ineffective. Not exactly. What? 
Now, it's very rare that imaginary friends get reassigned, but I think this will be a situation that you could understand. Wait, really? Yes. And I'd get to do it? That's why I called you. Should you accept? I accept. Wonderful. Your new assignment will begin shortly after your guide vacation ends. Aw, oh, I want to start now. Patience, in this case, is very important, Jasper. You're right. I'll be patient. Man, I don't know how I'm going to keep up with you now that you're five. It's because my superpowers have kicked in. And I'm sure all that cake helped boost your superpowers too, didn't it? Yeah. I got super speed, super jumping. Let's jump on the bed. I, I don't think Mommy would appreciate that while she's trying to rest, bud. You should be ready to rest too. But that's so boring. Can you use your superpowers to be super still? I have a surprise for you, but I can't give it to you if you can't make yourself a super statue. I can do it! Watch! Go! I want to see the surprise! All right. Stay perfectly still and close your eyes. This here, Tom, is the coolest hat in the entire world. This hat has been on a Major League Baseball team. It won a World Series, and it was used in a show-and-tell project when I was about your age. It also helped me meet a very important person. Wow. Yeah. It was important to my dad, so he gave it to me. It became important to me, so now I want to give it to you. Thanks, Daddy! No problem, kiddo. Well, now I think it's time you use your superpowers to get to super sleep. Can't I just play a little while longer? Okay, fine. You can play for ten more minutes. But, when I come back, we're going to go to bed. Okay. You'll say what you think it is, and I'll say what I think it is. Jasper! <gasps> oh my goodness, you actually got my name right! Who would have thunk it? I like that name. So do I. My daddy gave me that hat. Why are you wearing it? Hats are kind of my thing. Okay. Do you want to play? Sure. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, All right, bud, time's up. You gotta go to sleep now. All right. I made a new friend. Oh, did you now? Well, what's their name? Jasper. He's wearing the hat you just gave me. You're kidding. No, if I was telling a joke, I would say knock, knock. Like this one. <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there? Nobody. Nobody who? Nobody who, Tommy? Oh, you got me. All right, that was a good one. All right, bud, but now it's really time to get you in bed. All right. I love you, kiddo. Your mom and I love you very much. Love you too, Daddy. Good night, Tommy. Good night, Jasper. <laughs>